Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is milk. M-I-L-K. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Anybody got a dime for a cup of coffee? Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who's face to try for? A couple about to be married, Groucho. They were selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they are, Miss Marie Fortin and Mr. Harry Chauze. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, youngsters. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you'll uh, find around the house. Mary uh, Fortin, is that... Uh... Fort. <laughs> Harry uh, Chaussey, is that right? Chaussey. Chaussey. Huh? Where are you from, Harry? I'm from Salix, Iowa. Where's that? Uh, near? Any place? Oh, next Sioux City. <laughs> Why did you leave your hometown, uh, Harry? I would have come out to the West. Well, was it a good move when you left? Uh, oh, I think so. I met Marie by coming out here. Well, answer my question. Uh, was it a good move? When you left? <laughs> I made a mistake when I left my hometown. If I hadn't made the mistake, I wouldn't have had to leave. <laughs> so you two are going to get hooked up, huh? Yeah. Well, that's very nice. Huh? What kind of work do you do, Harry? I'm a machinist in Arabian American Oil Company, Saudi Arabia. You going over there, over there? Yes, we're going back over there. How did you meet Superman here, uh, Marie? Well, I met him in the first grade. We went to school together. <laughs> And never had another fellow from the first grade up to now? Oh, yes. <laughs> you just took him as a last resort, is that it? <laughs> what, what about you, Harry? Have you had any other girls in the uh, interim between the first grade and Arabia? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most lying laugh I've ever heard. Huh? <laughs> Did she accept you immediately after you worked up enough courage to propose, uh, Harry? No, not right away. You had to squeeze it out of her, huh? <laughs> you remember the circumstances of his big love scene, Marie? Well, he took me dancing to various places around the city. And, uh, well, he didn't ask me to marry him. He asked me if I wanted to go to Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> Like me a roundabout proposal if I ever heard of it. <laughs> Driving, I must try that sometime. Driving with a guy in the car and you say, I'd like to go to Arabia. <laughs> and? What is there about Romeo that caused you to fall in love with him? Oh, his charming personality. <laughs> Could you give us an example of your personality? <laughs> Just stood and grinned at her, eh? <laughs> Well, he seems like a very nice fellow, Marie. Now, what do you like about Marie, Harry? Mm, I guess it's her sense of humor. <laughs> she has a good sense of humor? How do you know? She always laughs at my jokes. <laughs> How do you know she's laughing at your jokes? <laughs> How do you know it isn't the string on her corset that's tickling her? Huh? <laughs> Does that ever occur to you, Harry? Huh? I don't think she wears a corset. <laughs> you don't think she wears a corset? Eh? You're taking this girl all the way to Arabia and you're not sure whether she wears a corset? <laughs> well, you've aroused my curiosity. I'll never rest until I hear you tell a joke. Could you, uh, could you tell us a small joke? Mm, I don't believe I know any small ones. <laughs> well, tell us a wow, huh? Yeah. Did you ever hear the one about the fellow that played on the girls' basketball team? Well, that's pretty good. I like that, huh? <laughs> Is that the sort of thing you laugh at, Marie? You're supposed to say, how, how can a fellow play on a girls' basketball team? Oh, I see there's more to it, huh? <laughs> 
Oh, okay. How can a fella play on a girl's basketball team? He lied about his age. <laughs> That'll certainly kill him in Arabia, then. <laughs> Are you going to be the jealous type of wife, Marie? No, I don't think so. You won't mind if he steps out with another gal occasionally? Huh? Oh, he wouldn't do that. <laughs> Suppose you're sitting home all alone and uh, Harry is waking late at the office. You're watching the television matches on the uh, machine, huh? <laughs> and suddenly you see Harry in the first row at the wrestling matches with a beautiful babe. What would you do? Well, that's impossible. <laughs> Why is it impossible? <laughs> we don't have television. <laughs> this is beginning to sound like Bynes and Allen. <laughs> Marie, forget the television set. Suppose Harry's waking late and you go over to the Palladium and there's Harry dancing with a pretty blonde. What would you do? Oh, I'd walk up to him and ask him to explain. Well, that's very logical. There's only one thing that puzzles me. What are you doing at the Palladium while he's... <laughs> well, you're both very nice kids and in as much as you'll soon be married, in just one minute you're going to have a chance to make $1,500. Yes, tomorrow is a great day at all DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The brilliant new DeSoto is now on display, and the great Plymouth goes on display for the first time tomorrow. The great new Plymouth is a sensational new high for value in the low-priced field. But you be the judge. Look at it. Then climb into it and get the feel of this car. Put it up hills and through traffic. Give it the toughest tests you know. And as for value... You'll find this good-looking royal riding car is packed with value and ready to prove it. Ignition key starting, improved air pillow ride, the quick true stops of safeguard hydraulic brakes, the lively power of the high compression engine, and many other features exclusive with the great new Plymouth. Now, more than ever, Plymouth is the car that likes to be compared. For beautiful new styling, for roomy comfort, for easy riding and wonderful handling, for dollar for dollar value. So meet your new Plymouth, the American beauty, tomorrow at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now let's see if a couple of youngsters about to be married are going to get the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Fenneman, explain the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected initials of organizations as your category. Is that right? Here's your first question. You have $20. How much are you going to risk? $5. What educational organization do the initials PTA stand for? Parent-Teacher Association. That's right. Parent-Teachers Association. <laughs> Well, they're on their way, Groucho. They have $25. Ah, you swing along. You got $25. How much of the 25 are you going to try? Ten. What government body does AEC stand for? Atomic Energy Commission. Well, you're just wonderful, Marie. Huh? <laughs> they're climbing now, Groucho. They have $35. Here's your third question. You got 35 How much are you going to try? Fifteen. Fifteen. $15. For what informant of organization do the initials INS stand for? INS. Take a stab. I don't believe I know that. No, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's the uh, International News Service. They now have $20, Groucho. All right, you now got $20. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 20 are you going to try now? 20. What labor organization do the initial CIO stand for? Congressional Industrial Organization. That's close yeah. enough. Congress of Industrial Organizations oh. is close enough. And they wind up with a total of $40. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't sneak off to Arabia yet. You still might get the chance at the big question. Groucho, the, yes, secret, George? the secret word is still milk. 
Perhaps our next couple will say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a house mover, Mr. Ab Wilson, and his partner is a housewife, Mrs. Pat Johnson. And here they are, folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. A house mover and a, and a housewife, eh? Mrs. Uh, Johnson, uh, I'll, I'll bet you're the housewife. Is, is that right? That's right. <laughs> now, where are you from, Mrs. Johnson? I'm from Denver, Colorado. You must be the house mover, huh? Yeah, I'm the house mover. I'm the big boy. <laughs> Ab, Ab Wilson is... That's uh, right. What does Ab stand for? Is that Abe? Just or, Ab. Uh, That's Ab. You well, I never heard that. that name. Is that a, a derivative of Abe or uh, yeah. Abner or what? Uh, well, I guess it would be, you know, you take a house mover, they... The less material you have, the better off you are, you know. <laughs> what, what is a house mover? Do you move houses? Or? Yes, sir. You move whole houses? Whole houses, yes, sir. Where are you from, Ab? Walks of Hatchie, Texas. Walks of, is that near Nacogdoches? <laughs> what is the biggest uh, hazard in your profession? Is it housemaid's knee? Well, no. It's uh, going over, up or down a hill, you know, and get break loose, you know, and get away. Well, what do you do when they break loose? You stand there with your fingers in your ears and your no. eyes closed? <laughs> what happens to the occupants uh, when you move a house? Do they just pitch a tent by the side of the road and uh, well, no, until no, you're through? No, they can live right on in the house. It's... <laughs> Suppose they're moving in the house and the husband is still in the, in the bathtub. Well, I'll take him right along. You don't spill no water. <laughs> he might step right out of the tub into the lobby of the Biltmore Hotel. <laughs> How long have you been moving houses? About 40 years. Mm-hmm. Can, you, can you move any building? Yes, sir. Could you move the Empire State well, Building uh, in Chicago? I could if it wasn't for the wind. To... You could move the Empire State Building in Chicago? If it wasn't for the wind, yes. It wouldn't be easy, you know. It's in New York, the building. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make it be a little windy. Well, I suppose many unusual things happen to you oh, in your business. Oh, right? yes. Could, yes you, uh, could you remember any outstanding experience well, that you care to relate? Uh, no more than I got to uh, move the house, wrong house on the uh, <laughs> house on the wrong lot, you know. Robert, what was that? You? I could move the <clears throat> house on the wrong lot, not exactly the wrong lot. I just got the wrong house on the, uh, on, uh, the wrong house on the wrong lot. See? What do you mean? You moved the lot over to the wrong house? <laughs> I moved it to the wrong lot. Then I had to get it off before the man caught me, you know. Well, let's start over again, okay. huh? Okay. Could you move the Empire State Building in Chicago? I could if it wasn't for the wind. Yeah. Even though it's in Cleveland? <laughs> What's the difference? Well, thanks to you, Ab. I know all about house moving. Okay, now you two are going you. to get a chance to play your bet your life for $1,500. You run your $20 and the more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the big DeSoto Plymouth question later. Fenneman's offstage remind our listeners how much the first couple won. The couple about to be married won $40. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected famous dogs as your category. Is that right? Now, here's your first question. You have $20. How much do you want to bet? And talk right up. $10. Okay. What's the name of the famous collie dog that stars in motion pictures? Uh, Dottie. Is it? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. The answer is Lassie. They now have ten dollars. How much of the ten dollars will you try? Five. What's the name of Blondie and Dagwood's dog? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry. It's well, Daisy. Well, I wanted nursery rhymes, but oh. that had already been taken. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, that's a shame. They now have five dollars, Groucho. Well, you've only got five dollars, and here's your third question. How much of the five will you try? Three. What's the name of Mickey Mouse's dog? Mm -hmm. You know? Don't they have any dogs in Denver? <laughs> the dog's name is Pluto. They now have two dollars, Groucho. Well, now you're only down to two dollars. How much of the two dollars are you going to try? One dollar, I guess. One dollar. <laughs> All right. What's the name of the late President Roosevelt's... of, the, of late President Roosevelt's little Scotty? Now, that's been the papers for a long time. Well, I, I'm sorry. It's Fella. I'm going to give you one more chance to make some money. It's not going to be uh, so easy, so think hard now, and no help, please. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? Grant. General Grant is right.
Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, it won't be long before we know who's going to earn the chance at the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question. George, who's leading at this point? The young couple are ahead with $40, and the secret word is still milk. Just before we went on the air, we went looking through our studio audience for the parents of the most children. And here come the mother and the father who were chosen. Mr. and Mrs. Marion D. Story meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. <laughs> and if you say the secret word, you win a hundred bucks in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mr. and Mrs. Marion D. Story. Marion? Which one of you is Marion? Oh. I thought you were already married. Uh... <laughs> well, that was a whirlwind courtship. Huh? <laughs> Mrs. Story, your, your first name is, is Charlotte, is that right? That's right. Charlotte, huh? Where, where, where are you from, Charlotte? Uh, Bakersfield, California, about 100 miles north from here. Marion, what do you do for a living? I'm a sign painter. Sign painter, huh? How'd you meet the Indian sign here, Charlotte? <laughs> oh, I met him on a boat, and it was raining real hard this night. And uh, he uh, said, would you share your umbrella with me? And I said, sure. And so... Uh, <laughs> and so... Uh, That's a pretty corny approach there, Marion. <laughs> it worked. How long have you kids been married? Twenty-eight years. Well, you're a fine-looking couple. Now, Mr. Story, according to Fenneman, you two are up here because you're the parents of the largest family. Is, is that correct? Well, yes, I am. <laughs> yes, it is. You mean you only guess you have a large family? <laughs> no. I mean, haven't you counted the livestock lately? <laughs> So there's no question about the family. Uh, it's just a question why you're up here, huh? <laughs> Mrs. Story, how many times have you been a mother? Twenty times. Oh, I can't do that. Is this really true? Twenty uh, children, Marion? That is true. Twenty. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently nothing's happened in the last few seconds, anyway. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Story, my hat, if it was on, would now be off to you. You're a remarkable woman, huh? Tell me, Popsicle, uh, <laughs> when you see a lot of kids around your house, uh, how do you know if they're all yours? Well, I remember faces. <laughs> You never forget a face, eh? <laughs> Could you give us the names? Could you reel them off for me? Uh... Well, I'll start with the twins. There's Jean and Jane and Jimmy and Jeanette and Gary and Sherry and Eileen and Arlene. That's twins, four sets of twins. Mm -hmm. There's two sets of uh, girl twins and there's two sets of mixed twins. Mixed twins, huh? Oh, and the others all goes by the name of Jean and Jane and Jack and Jacqueline and June and so on and so forth. <laughs> How old are the children, uh, Mrs. Story? Well, the oldest is uh, from 27 to 3 years old. Mm. Have you ever thought of adopting any children? <laughs> no, it never occurred to me. <laughs> Tell me, Pop, with each new kid, do you go around passing out cigars? Well, I used to. I stopped at about a dozen. <laughs> What do you, you pass out yourself now, is that it? <laughs> well, tell me, Pop. Pop, that's the understatement of the year. Uh, Paul Bunyan. Uh, if you can't remember all the names, how do you know who to call when you want something? Uh, well, if I want one of the boys, I just say, Son? <laughs> Aren't you afraid of getting trampled in the rush? <laughs> What kind of living quarters do you have? The Hotel Bakersfield? No, we have uh, two acres. We have a ten-room house and uh, two showers and a bath. And... and do you have a cop in the hallway directing traffic? Or... <laughs> well, with all these income tax deductions, uh, how do you make out around March 15th, Pop? Well, I haven't paid income tax for years. <laughs> Uh, 
You wouldn't want to loan me about eight kids, huh? <laughs> How do you manage to feed 20 kids? Uh, do you do it in shifts? Well, that's easy. I have a budget, and um, I buy everything wholesale. And, and <laughs> I start breakfast at 5 o'clock in the morning. I get all the work, and one's off to work. And then uh, I've got uh, 10, 10 to get off for school, and, and I got some home, and I finally get through about 7 o'clock at night. And then What's your grocery bill amount to every week, uh, Charlotte? That's not it, too uh, uh, personal a question. Well, it runs to $100 a week. And, uh, Suppose the family's having lunch on Sunday. What would you ordinarily find on the table? Well, Besides a few of the children, huh? <laughs> children are all there. Well, I'll take uh, Thanksgiving Day. Well, uh, we had uh, two 30-pound turkeys, and uh, we had 20 pounds of roast chicken, and uh, we had a gallon of mashed potatoes, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, 14 pumpkin pies, and... Eight mince pies and six cranberry pies and gallons pie. of salads. And, <laughs> and what do you use for toothpicks? A redwood glass? <laughs> Marion, tell me, as the father of 20 kids, have you had any unusual or unforgettable experience? <laughs> I've had lots of unusual experiences. Uh, we were living in Sacramento... And coming into the hospital, we had to borrow our neighbor's car because ours was broken down. Should have had a DeSoto. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we came to the American River Bridge. and we got to the first approach, my mama says, Take it easy, Pop. <laughs> so we had the car stop, and one baby was born. And I said, well, go ahead now. We get to the hospital fast. So the driver got in. We started, and we got to the other end of the bridge. Mama says, take it easy, Pop. <laughs> That's why they call them suspension bridges. <laughs> Bridges hereafter. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mrs. Story? Have you had an unusual experience? <laughs> well, uh, when Jerry was born. What number was he? Do you know? Oh, he was number 12. Number 12. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that very clearly. Well, I got I... out of the hospital and I went home. Well, there was uh, 11 down with the hoot and cough and measles. Oh. And so. Uh, you never realized that night when you were on the bay and it was raining and you had the umbrella that uh, all this was going to happen. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> well, that'll teach you, Mr. Story. Never carry an umbrella when it's raining. Eh? <laughs> well, it's, it's really been inspiring having you two here tonight. And, Mr. Story, you have every right to be the proudest mother in the country. Now, you're going to play the DeSoto Plymouth game? You bet your life. If you beat our other two couples, you get a crack at the $1,500 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The young engaged couple is still ahead with $40. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected nursery rhymes as your category. Is that right? And that's a subject you ought to know a great deal about. <laughs> you have $20, and how much are you going to try? Ten. Who called for his fiddler's three? Old King Cole. Old King Cole is right. <laughs> Roger with $30. All right, you got $30. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. How much of the 30 are you going to try? 25. 25. Who was asleep under the haystack when he should have been tending sheep? Uh, Come on, uh, now. Oh, I, I'm sorry. It's a shame, but it was Little Boy Blue. Very easy to get confused on that. They now have $5. Oh, you're all the way down to $5. All right, now. Here's your third question. You got five dollars, and how much are you going to bet? Five dollars. Who picked a peck of pickled pepper? Peter Piper. Peter Piper is right. <laughs> On the way again, I have ten dollars. All right, now you got ten dollars. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the ten are you going to bet? All of it. All right, who fell down the hill and broke his crown? Jack. Jack is right. And they wind up with twenty dollars. And that means the young engaged couple gets the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth fifteen hundred dollar question.
You've got to see it to believe it. You've got to drive it to appreciate it. Yes, that's the new Plymouth. The great new Plymouth that's packed with value and ready to prove it. Prove this to yourself tomorrow at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Let your dealer arrange a demonstration drive. Then compare. Compare the value in this great new car with that in other leading low-priced cars. Compare the new beauty and style, the easy riding and wonderful handling, the great engineering that makes it the low-priced car most like high-priced cars. Check the prompt convenience of Plymouth's ignition key starting, the flashing getaway power of the high-compression engine, the soft velvet stops of safeguard hydraulic brakes, the protection of safety rim wheels, and many other exclusive Plymouth features. Yes, check and compare. For beauty, for power, for room, for riding comfort. Plymouth, now more than ever, the car that likes to be compared. See this great new Plymouth, the American beauty, at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow. And while you're there, don't miss seeing the brilliant new DeSoto as well. A car that's truly new, with new features from bumper to bumper. The finest car that has ever borne the name DeSoto. Learn why your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is so proud of the two superb cars he has on display. The great new Plymouth and the brilliant new DeSoto. And here's the young couple all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question, Groucho. All right, here we go for $1,500. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you, so think carefully, and please, no assistance from the audience. Here it is. Frederick Augustus Bartholdi was a famous French sculptor. His best-known work is well known to all of us. What is Bartholdi's great work? Statue of Liberty? Statue of Liberty is right. <laughs> That's right. You win $1,500. You had the right answer. What are you going to do with all that money? I'm going to give it all to Marie. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you going to do with it, Marie? I'll take care of it. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week's big question will be worth $1,000. Well, it's almost time for the Bing Crosby Show, and tonight I understand his guest star will be that incomparable comedian of You Bet Your Life. Hey, that's me, Groucho Marx. See you again in a few minutes, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a tip from the National Safety Council. When you're in your car, be a wise driver, not a wise guy. This is George Benjamin signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Mm-hmm.